Hello my dolly dearies and welcome to another video. So today we are feeling particularly festive, so get yourself cozy under a warm blanket with some hot chocolate in hand and your fairy lights twinkling behind you, cause it is Christmas time. I absolutely adore Christmas because, you know, sweets, lights, glitter, hot chocolate, all of the above and so much more makes it so lovely. So it is then, of course, time for our Christmas doll. This year I of course wanted to do a doll themed after the pinnacle of Christmas, a candy cane incorporating the beautiful taste of peppermint and the colours of red and white of snow and Santa Claus. Or maybe just Santa Claus. Nonetheless, I am feeling particularly Christmassy and very excited, so without any further ado, let's get on with the video. For our candy cane prints, I very quickly did a sketch of how I wanted him to look. And for this doll, we've actually got a few options for the base. My collection of male dolls has expanded, so we've got some choices. But we can do some immediate throwing out of what options we're going to pick. We can throw out, I think his name is Nathan and Gil, I'm not 100% sure, as well as these two, who I've got no clue what their names are, because they have more interesting features which will be better suited for fantasy dolls. Which leaves us with Heath, I think his name is, and Hunter. Now I feel that Heath's sculpted jawline and much more defined detail will be much better for our candy cane prints. And his yellow skin tone also has a slightly sickly sweet candy feel. To begin, we can pop off his weird little head cap. For some reason, it really looks weird when it pops off. It's like a little hat and it leaves a weird indent around their head. Then we can take a hairdryer to soften the vinyl of the head to better remove the head from the neck peg as not to break it. Which I did. Oops. So unfortunately, bits of the neck peg were rattling around in his head and I could get one of the pieces out, but the other would not and was just stuck rattling around his head no matter how hard I tried and I couldn't quite grab it with pliers. So that's gonna be stuck in his head forever. Lucky him. Now we can remove his face paint with some 100% acetone. I dip some cotton buds into the acetone and use sweeping motions to wipe away the face paint. It is best to try and rotate the bud rather than smear it across the face because that will smear the face paint around and give you more work to do. So I try to use a rotating motion to slowly wipe and scoop off all the face paint. Now he's all clean and ready to go. But first, we're gonna get his hair done. Now, for the white hair, I found that I had the slightly creamy one left over from some doll wigs and some random weird wefts of red that I've got left over from something. I'm not sure how old it is, but it's in good enough quality. I take some scissors and carefully snip out bits of hair from throughout these weird blonde wigs. I think they're from the Create Your Own Monster doll line. I'm not 100% sure, but if I were to use my one doll of that, I would probably make my own wig. So I don't feel too bad about snipping away this hair. I still try to keep it a bit neat. So bit by bit, I take off the hair and using some PVA glue, I begin to make wefts. I lay out the hair on some tin foil and coat a thick layer of PVA across the top to seal it all in place. Once dry, I can trim this down to a smaller little wedge which will better cling to the head and not leave as much poofiness. And with his hair wefts drying, we can get onto the face up. I take my Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant and cover his face with two thick coats of it. This will give me a good base layer to start building pastels on. Unfortunately, due to the cold, it did not take extraordinarily well, so I had to try really, really hard to get any pigment with the pastels. As always, I blush the cheeks, eyes, lips, and nose using my weird little animal erasers to get into all of the teeny tiny crevices of his face. I continually work back and forth trying to get a nice shape, shade and colour, which I am happy with. 
you have to keep in mind when blushing your doll that all of the pastels will darken slightly when sprayed with Mr. Super Clear. So it is always better to be on a slightly lighter side with your pastels and blushing rather than do it too heavy handed and for it to darken immensely when you add your Mr. Super Clear. But happy with my pastels and the way it looks, I can get out the pencils and begin sketching in some basic eye shapes and details. I begin by sketching in his eyebrows using a white pencil to match his white hair. Unfortunately, the pencils were really not taking at all. So I decided to go in with a darker pencil to begin, thinking that I don't quite have enough layers for my white to have any effect. Taking the orange pencil, I begin to sketch out the base of his eye following the eye sculpt and darken his nostrils. I also add little dimples to the corner of his mouth, which I sketch into the lip line at the centre. I also end up colouring his lips a bit orange because I kind of felt that it would work for the doll with his yellow skin and I'm not 100% sure on it. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I seal the first layer in with another coat of Mr. Super Clear sealant, and unfortunately the sealant did not take very well, so we are going straight to using gouache paints. I begin by mixing up a grey for his eyes. The eye whites, despite being called whites, should not be completely white. They should be a slight grey so that the eye highlights, which you do in complete white, stand out better, but also to give the doll a hint of realism. I then take a white with the teeniest, teeniest bit of yellow in and start sketching in his eyebrows. I'm not extraordinarily good at eyebrows, so trying to do these straight off the bat with paint was quite daunting, but I think they turned out okay. I can then take a very, very bright red for his eyes. He ended up looking a bit creepy and alien-like at this phase, which for a Christmas doll is not exactly the vibe that I'm going for, so let's see if we can change that up a bit. I think that maybe adding in a bit of an eyelid in a darker black could help, because what doll is complete without eyeliner? Eyeliner looks great on everyone. As everybody knows, my personality is just eyeliner. Insert other video meme here. Because as everyone should know, my entire personality is just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. <laughs> It is also kind of difficult to do it with this paintbrush. I have to be really careful about not getting the paintbrush too wet or too dry for it to go on right, which is always very daunting for me. But so far, it is turned out okay every time. I'm just kind of waiting for the day that it goes wrong and I need to scrub an entire doll's face up. <laughs> Touch wood, fingers crossed it never happens. But adding the eyeliner did help to make him look a bit more human. Now that the red paint on his eyes is dried, I can go in adding some dark reds for a bit more depth. I work back and forth with the paints, waiting for them to dry a bit because trying to mix wet colours on the doll's face is not the greatest of ideas. Not that that's stopped me from doing it before, but I'm trying to learn from my mistakes. It's an early New Year's resolution. I continue going back and forth with the details though changing bits which I'm unhappy with and just trying to really refine them. I really really brighten the whites of his eyes using a teeny bit of watered down grey from the lid. I also decide to give him white pupils because they stand out better against the red than the black. Which doesn't really help to making him look more human, he now looks quite alien but we're just gonna go with it. I also start adding a bit more dimension to his eyebrows. 
adding tiny stripes of red to make them look like candy canes themselves. I then go in with some oranges to really make his lips pop. Going on top of the orange that I'd already laid down with a similar of a colour I can mix. I always find that with winter dolls I end up using a lot of paint due to Mr. Superclear not taking properly, which always ends up in more of a pop party style, which really means I have to have sharp paint lines and make absolutely everything pop and look fabulous. It's interesting to see how the style can just differentiate from summer to winter based on the temperature and weather conditions here and what I have to adapt to, but it's interesting nonetheless. work back and forth on his face, adding some final details and finishing touches that I feel would suit him best. Just also defining up lines, dabbing on teeny little highlights that I can smudge out with my fingers and such. But that's his face up done, and now we can move on to some other bits. To begin, I primed his head with white, as you can see, as a base for all of his hair. With all the wefts dry and good to go, we can begin on that. I take each weft, putting a teeny teeny bit of Yoohoo glue onto the head and pressing it down gently with my fingers and holding it in place until it's dried. And uh, who uh, yeah. He is looking a bit like he's stuck a fork in an electrical outlet, so... Let's see if we can fix that by chucking some rubber bands on his head and repeatedly boil washing it. Now, due to this being hair from original Monster High Dolls, it's not working out great. We've made a bit of progress, but while trying to figure that out, we can get to work on his outfit. I find that the most ingenious way to keep his hair down is by making him a fabric crown. Kind of like those crowns that you get in your Christmas crackers, and I also had tiny bits of red ribbon to make it look like a candy cane. I cut the crown out from some fabric that are covered in PVA glue, and then using more Yoohoo glue, I put glue on the back of the little red ribbons and fold them over the crown spikes. Try saying Yoohoo glue ten times fast, it doesn't sound like a word anymore with how many times I've had to record it. Glue doesn't sound like a word anymore, my god. But after pacing each bit of ribbon in place, I fold it over the spike of the crown, which helps reinforce the little pointiness of it because it got a bit damaged as I cut it out, and makes it look quite sweet. And that's his crown done, which keeps his hair down as well, which is a great bonus. Now for the rest of the outfit. To begin, we're going to work on his collars and ruffs. I've got this white lace, which I feel would be perfect for them. So I make a tiny little sliver of base fabric by folding over some fabric and gluing it down. Again, glue no longer sounds like a word. And I glue the ruffles in place onto the glued strip of fabric. And with some popper buttons attached to either side, he's got a fancy little neck ruffle. Now for the shirt. Using this pattern from uh, Pupe Ancel, I'm very sorry if I've butchered your name, she's a lovely artist over on Instagram, go and check her out. I modified it slightly into this double breasted, I think it's called, shirt style, and it looks pretty good and I attached some ruffles similar to the collar on the sleeves. It's not too bad if I do say so myself, and I finish it with some popper buttons at the back. I then also sew some little white beads on the front to act as buttons. I also hemmed the bit at the side, which is makes it look more like a shirt I think. 
I then also take some white embroidery threads to make little mimicked buttonholes for the buttons to go through. And with that, he's got a pretty cool looking print shirt. And now we can get on to making a sash. I have this really nice gold ribbon, but I felt it was a bit thick so I ended up folding it over itself and kind of gluing it across the back to make it a bit thinner. I then took these little weird bead gemstone things that I had in my drawer. Now each one of them consists of two parts, a little backing mount that you can sew to your fabric as it has a hole in the middle, and a little gemstone that you would then put into the middle and kind of bend the edges of the clasp over. And I had an idea about how I could modify this. I removed the back paint by sanding it off and painted in a teeny little peppermint design. I can then sew the central mounty thing onto the ribbon. And clench the little peppermint gemstony thing in there. I also take one of my many bells to help fasten the sash thing at the waist. Now onto his trousers. Using another pattern from the lovely uh, on ciel I'm very sorry, I don't know French. I use the pattern, modifying it slightly to add a small sliver of red down the side and turn them inside out, giving us some nice little princey, trousery things. My English is so eloquent in this video, isn't it? But I must say, they do look quite fabulous. Now we can move on to a cape. I've got this thick kind of fleece fabric that I used for some of Clara's outfit last year and I thought I could incorporate it into a nice cape this year. I originally marked it out to be a cape which kind of went down to his waist, but quickly decided against that, going for a full floor length cape. But I still marked out where it should taper in to go around his shoulders. And here's how it looks on the back of him. It kind of obscures him from view, but we're gonna add some fancy decoration on the back to make it worth it. Using my fabric pen, I sketch out a quick design for some trees and candy canes, and using my bags of weird bells, beads, and all sorts, we can get on to making it. I begin by doing a tiny little star design at the top, before progressing into green beads for the Christmas trees. And then I did some candy canes and added some weird bells at the bottom, and I basically used up my entire bag of beads. Oh my gosh. Now we are gonna add a bit more to this, but I feel I can't fill in the rest with beads because I do not have enough. So we're gonna have to figure out something else to do for the middle of the candy cane. So I scribble it in green with some Sharpie and using some glue and glitter, we are just going to make it absolutely shimmery and amazing, because glitter is the best thing in the world and Christmas would not be complete without enough of it to absolutely obliterate everyone's lungs in your local mile. So I chuck a bunch of glitter onto the PVA glue, which I shoved between all of the beads and for the middle bit. Now waiting for that to dry, we can make a quick pattern for his boots, and after sewing those and gluing them together off screen, he's done. I think that he's pretty good, and I'm very sorry I didn't record the boot process. I ended up getting a bit rushed on this doll, so I ended up doing it a lot kind of hunched over, so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. But I also added a nifty, fun little feature to his cape, which is... It lights up, and only at the cost of two burnt fingers.
Thank you guys so much for watching. This doll was a blast to make. Our candy cane prince was a bit of an adventure, but his cape, while a gigantic task, which dramatically shortened the amount of time that I could spend on this doll because I spent far too long on his cape, absolutely amazing, super enjoyable. I'll try to do a similar thing with LEDs to record for you and show you again, but it was a super fun project this year. I have really enjoyed this year when it comes to doll making. It has been such an adventure and so interesting and I feel that I've learned a lot this year and I'm really excited to see what I can do next year. And we recently hit 2000 subscribers which is so exciting so I'll probably be doing a Q&A and a giveaway and a whole bunch of fun stuff soon. So if you guys have any questions you'd like to see answered in the Q&A please drop them in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, please drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, comment, and share it with a friend if you're feeling a bit adventurous. Don't forget to go and check out my red bubble as I've got one of those now, and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye!